What is going on guys? I'm Johnny and this is my brother Matt and today we're going to show you how to make this video game controller rack. We've been playing video games for literally as long as we can remember. In fact we still use the same Nintendo 64 that our mum and dad gave us over 20 years ago and it's still going strong. But what's more impressive is how the controllers have stood the test of time as we used to chuck them 10 feet across the room every time one of us lost a game. We figured it was about time we built them a well-deserved home. Here's how we made it. So to kick things off, we started by making the back panel of the project. We decided to go with pallet wood for this because it's super easy to get hold of in our area and we like the overall aesthetic. Once we had enough pallet wood, we were really careful to make sure we got rid of all of the nails. This way we can safely run it through our table saw in order to get two straight edges. We gave each piece a cheeky little once over with a sander. But we didn't go too much as we didn't want to lose the natural character that the pallet wood has. We then mounted all of these onto a piece of plywood which we cut to fit our space exactly. In our case this was 1100 by 600 millimeters, but you can tailor this to fit whatever size space that you have. We used a combination of hot glue and wood glue for this to allow us to keep moving without having to sit around and wait for glue to dry. As you can see we stuck each piece of pallet wood a few millimetres in from one edge on the plywood and the reason we did that is so that we had a nice straight edge that we could reference against our table saw fence. Once we cut one edge flush we could flip it over and do the same to the other side. Once we had finished the back piece it was onto the next stage of the build and this was to make a series of custom holders for each of the controllers we had. We started by measuring the angle where the controller would be in contact with the holder using a bevel gauge and then transferred the angle onto the mitre saw to allow us to cut the angle accurately. This step took a lot longer than we expected because of the different shapes and sizes of controllers to consider. Where the mounts for the PlayStation controllers needed square edges, those for the various Xbox controllers needed rounding over. We used the belt sander in order to match this shape perfectly. Now the Nintendo 64 controllers were a whole nother ball game. Being the only controller we had in our collection that had three handles instead of two, this required a completely different approach. So we went with U-shaped mounts to hold these in place. We don't have a spindle sander in the workshop, so we used a drum sander mounted in the pillar drill to clean up the inside curves. The final mounts we had to do were for the Wii controllers. We thought long and hard about the best way to store these, and in the end we decided that less is more, so we went for a simple racking system that the controller would friction fit into. We used the palm router to cut grooves into the pallet wood, and then we cut strips of hardwood to fit into the slots that we'd made. The fit came out really snug, which was super satisfying. We wanted to attach all of the controller mounts to the backboard using a dowel. Because of the weird angles we had to cut, we need an accurate and safe way to drill these holes. So we set up a quick drilling jig in order to do this, and then we used a piece of tape as a depth marker. We marked and centre punched each hole exactly where we wanted all of the mounts to be located. For each hole, we used the holder as a guide to find the correct angle, and we used tape again to give us a depth stop. One of the main design features we wanted for this build was to make sure the wires were hidden. So we cut out some 6mm slots to allow the wires to tuck into the space behind the rack when the controllers were sat in their mounts. Once all of the mounts were glued in place, it was time to make the front fascias. These will keep the controllers in place and stop them falling off the rack. We spent a little while sketching out a few designs on card. This took a couple of attempts to get something that we were happy with before we were ready to commit to cut it in the hardwood. We tried to tailor the shape of each fascia to match the style of each controller. After roughly cutting these out on the bandsaw, it was back over to the good old sanders to get the exact shape we were after. Mm -hmm. 
Oh, and just as a heads up, we hate sanding. We use wood glue and our headless pinner to attach each of the fascias to the holders. Before putting the second pin in, we would stand back just to make sure it looked level. The pins prevent the fascias moving around whilst the glue dries. So next, we attach some pieces of 2x4 to act as spacers, which will provide a gap behind the rack for the wires to fall into. We cut a relief slot in the top end of each piece for the French cleat which we'll be using to hang the rack once it's finished. We used a combination of wood glue and pocket holes to attach these to the back of the plywood. We used the table saw to rip down strips of the same hardwood that we could use to edge band the entire piece. We used the same technique of wood glue and pins to attach this all the way around. Then using our Japanese pool saw we trimmed all of the excess flesh. So this next part of the build is completely optional, but we chose to add a customised LED box featuring each brand logo as we thought we'd finish the piece off really well. To do this we made a mitre jointed box with grooves cut in for both the acrylic front face and MDF back panel. We measured the exact width of the rack and marked this length on some leftover hardwood. To make the mitre joints we tilted the saw to give us an exact 45 degree cut. To make sure we got this right, we test fit this together using a strap clamp before gluing and brad nailing the bottom plate onto the top of the rack. Here you can also see that we have added some slots in the bottom plate for the LEDs to pass through later. While we had the table saw set up, we thought it would be a good opportunity to rip down and attach the cleat. By cutting this at a 45 degree angle and attaching one piece to the wall and the other to the rack, you create a simple and effective wall hanging method. So back to the light box. We took a piece of clear acrylic and three colours of vinyl to represent the three different brands of games console. This would change the colour of light coming through from a strip of white LEDs. So our original plan for the logos was to cut these out by hand out of black card. Unfortunately, we completely ran out of time and had to resort to getting these laser cut. If you don't have access to a laser cutter, then you could achieve the same thing on a scroll saw from thin MDF, or likewise, you could just cut these from cardstock with just a craft knife and a solid amount of patience. After spraying the car black, we sandwiched this between the coloured acrylic and a separate layer of clear acrylic for the front. Once we knew that the size was correct, we set about gluing and brad nailing the sides and top of the light box back together. The last couple of things before wiring in the LEDs was to trim the edge banding around the slots we cut for the wires. Also, we had to add a few bits of leftover pallet wood in an L shape on each bottom corner to catch the cables and prevent them falling out underneath. We wanted the whole piece to give off a warm glow, so we ran a single strip of LEDs up each side. However, the main priority was to get as much light into the light box as possible. A strip of 500 LEDs gave us two loops inside the box. Once they were in place, we used hot glue to secure the power adapter before pinning the MDF back panel into place. And after a bit of final sanding and attaching the rack to the wall, you're done. And there you have it. Your favorite childhood controllers are the proud owners of a new home. We're genuinely really happy with how this build came out. We would have liked to have had enough time to be able to cut the logos ourselves, but hey, maybe next time. Thank you so much for watching. This is our first proper video, so any feedback you have would be massively appreciated. And if you enjoyed the video, we'd love it if you could like and subscribe. Until next time, guys.